You do the detect. Says maybe, you know, my father was responsible for you. Now says it was an insult to tell him that you are, if your mother had come, that means you know you are my blood brother. You know, my father had planted seeds on both. He understands that this is no honor. This is an insult. He's insinuating that this guy is a bastard. That's what he's trying to say, that you are a bastard. You know, my father must be responsible for you. He said, no, no, no. My father was responsible for you. No, man, you are a king. But you know, he said, no, my father did. He did come. I don't say what happened, what not. That's what I don't know. But my father did come. So true honor is, keep the man according to his status. What does he claim? He claims to be the Messiah. He claims to be the messenger of God. He claims to be the mouthpiece of God. He said, I by the finger of God cast out devils. By God's power, you know, according to his directions. Not the finger, taking God's finger and, you know, trying to pry out devils from people. No, no, no. It means according to God's direction. Whatever God directs me to do, I do. He said, my father is greater than I. He said, my father is greater than all. He says, I can of my own self do nothing. That's true honor. Whatever he says, I can do of my own self, do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. This is his true position. He is the Messiah. He is the word which God bestowed upon Mary. He was born miraculously. He gave life to the dead by God's permission. He healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. Stay with that. Stay with that. Don't go beyond. As soon as you go beyond, this is no honor. This is an insulting thing, going to extremes. He is neither this nor that. He is a messenger of God. As I quoted you last night, that Quranic verse, telling the Jews and the Christians, La Do not go to extremes in your religion. Don't go to extremes. So Muhammad glorified Jesus, testified about him. He said, he shall not speak from himself, who the one that's coming. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak. Where did Muhammad speak from? Where did he get his knowledge from? Allah tells us, He does not speak from his own desire. In It is no less than an inspiration sent down to him. Allamahu shadidul quwa. He is taught by one mighty in power. His knowledge is not his. It is being given to him by inspiration. And Jesus said, For he shall not speak from himself on his own. You know, making up his own mind, you know, concocting his own theories, philosophies. No, no, no. Whatever is given to him, he gives it to you. What he hears, he conveys them to you. And you see, it fits. This prophecy fits our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like a glove. We don't have to stretch hook or by crook somehow make him fit Muhammad. We don't have to do that. He will guide you into all truth. As I said, every problem, every problem besetting mankind, come, 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 ask. I will end with one example. I can give you many, but one example. And then I leave to you, my audience, to ask questions for further elucidation. You see, the late King Sobuza, of Swaziland. He had eight wives, or nine wives. And his eldest wife, number one, she died. And when she died, there was a controversy in Swaziland. It's a small inland country, like Switzerland. Swaziland, Switzerland. It's about the same size. <laughs> the population is only about a million, Swaziland. You have about six million. The differences in the population, but otherwise Swaziland, King Subuza. So when his wife died, there was a controversy in the country. He says, now how long is a man to wait before he can remarry? Since the queen died, now how long is a man to wait? Suppose the woman is dead, your wife died, how long must you wait before you remarry? And the things started going around, and the churches now. How long? And there's arguments going on, debates going on. But before long, this debate changed to how long is a woman. He said, look, the king has still got eight more wives, so it's not a problem. What are you worried about? 
Why controversy? Why wasting time, energy? Now let's talk, how long is a woman to wait if the husband dies? Controversy. All the churches, Roman Catholic Church, Anglican Church, the Jehovah's Witnesses, Assemblies of God. Shh. You just imagine the names that they are there among the Africans. And they're arguing and debating. So the king says, no, this is no good. I want to call up a synod. All the churches must get together now and discuss this, debate this. So there was a Swazi gentleman, Musa Borman. He died. May Allah give him Jannat. He was a Swazi. And this Swazi invited me from Durban, South Africa says, come. You know, he's calling, the king is calling all the churches. And well, we Muslims, well, we are in also another church. We are Muslims. So he says, we must be also represented. So I said, all right, I'm coming. So I went. And we were accommodated in the king's crawl, open ground, and the debate started. How long is a woman to wait after the demise of her husband for her to remarry? How long? He sat on the ground, in the grass, the morning 7 o'clock, he's carrying on, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the Africans, great orators. Everyone a potential Billy Graham or Jimmy Swaggart. Every one of them. The Africans are born orators. So one comes along. And he makes a point. Let's say three months. And everybody says, hooray, hooray. Well done. The next guy comes along, he says, Palish. Palish means porridge, means rubbish. What this guy spoke is all rubbish. And he makes a point. Six months. The woman must wait. The next guy comes along, he says, Palish. It's porridge. This is all rubbish. Garbage. What the guy was speaking. And he makes a point, he says, 12 months. And on and on, from 7 in the morning, <laughs> no breakfast, no lunch. <laughs> the Africans can take it. <laughs> Our Nigerian brother, is he here? He's not here tonight. I think he had enough last night. <laughs> so, my turn came at 5 in the evening. So I'm telling them, <coughs> I said, you see, from morning till now, we haven't come to a solution. Reason? I said, you're quoting the Old Testament, you're quoting the New Testament. You're quoting the New Testament, you're quoting the Old Testament. And the answers are not there. You haven't got the answer there. The answer is in the last testament. And I did this. Last testament. And they got the shock. Never heard a word like that before in their life. You see, they know Old Testament, New Testament. Old Testament, have you heard of a Last Testament? No. We say this is the Last Testament, the last and final revelation of God to mankind. The answer is here. This is, where did this come from? So look, wait, wait. But the answer is here. And you don't have to reason. You don't have to deduce. You don't have to argue. You don't have to debate. The answer is here. And I opened Surah Baqarah. Verse number, uh, chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, or something like that. It reads, it reads, If any of you die and leave widows behind, they shall wait concerning themselves four months and ten days. Do you want a, an interpreter for that? You want an alim, shaykh, imam to tell you what it means? Four months and ten days. No arguments. Four months and ten days. When they have fulfilled the term of waiting, the women, there is no blame on you if they dispose themselves in a just and reasonable manner. And God is well acquainted with what you do. There is no blame.